This is Candace McClure from Hemlock Grove, and you're listening to the Variety Radio online. This is Michelle with Variety Radio Online at DragonCon 2013. I have Candace McClure with me today. How are you doing, Michelle? I'm doing great. First, I'd love to ask you is, what do you think about DragonCon? I love that people get to come here and just let their crazy out. This is a place where they can be free to express themselves and their passions and be with one another um, in a way that, that, you know, there's no hold bu- holds barred, there's no boundaries, and they can completely be themselves. And I love that. Any space that's conducive to that, I'm all for it. I think it's neat that DragonCon is a very fan-based um, it's really strong in the fans and the costumes. What do you think about costumes? What's the most interesting costume you've seen? I've seen such <laughs> elaborate costumes. I'm, you know, the workmanship that goes into some of these things, you, it's really obvious how much time and effort people put into it. I think it's amazing. Um, I, I wish I knew more of the characters, especially the anime characters, uh, because I'm not so familiar with them. I just think they look incredible. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right there with you. I'm right? Like, oh, it looks amazing. But Who I've is it? Se- you know, I've seen things that are glowing and things with tendrils and uh, there's been a lot of butts hanging out I will say that (laughs) Um, but I actually saw an amazing Jack Sparrow it was a young girl really and she had made everything on her she had sewn the um She'd sewn the shirt, she had whittled the wood, she had did the dreadlock, she would hand-embroidered the vest. It was an amazing set of craftsmanship. Yeah. When you took on Battlestar Galactica, did you expect the fandom that follows afterwards? I mean, because it's just a beautiful fan base. Um, did you expect to feel and have that warmth years later? You know, we didn't. We, we knew, I knew right away that it was something special. But, you know, we're in Canada, and I'm Canadian, so I didn't really see all the big billboards and stuff. I wasn't necessarily a part of the press very early on Mm -hmm. in the show. But it's amazing. It's five years after the show has been on the air. Um, It's six years since I've been on the show, almost seven. And here they still are. Our panels are packed. People are lining up to see us. People are... coming to the show fresh Mm -hmm. they're still starting to watch the show Mm -hmm. and it's great to see that excitement and that impact I think the message will go on forever I imagine that we will be here doing this 20 years from now uh, because people will still be passionate about the show and Battlestar fans sci-fi fans in particular uh, in general but Battlestar fans in particular I I notice are an intelligent uh, compassionate, thoughtful, and really loyal group mm-hmm. of people. Mm-hmm. And we come here to see you, you know, yeah. we come here to see them because without them, we wouldn't be us. No, it's great. Um, I'd like to jump real quick to your current um, project with yes. Netflix. Yes. Um, I'd love two things, two parts. Um, one, how is it working with Netflix, uh, then branching out into doing series, which I think is great for, for viewers out there and doing something different, and then a little bit about the show and who you play. It's been great working for Nef- Netflix. I mean, they're a, they're a young group of mavericks. They're they're raising the bar in terms of what's available on television mm-hmm. and um, – we, we can do it with sort of less of the con- constraints of, of regular television. We don't sort of have the censorship that we have to go through. So it's an open field. And, of course, you know, they hired a novelist who wrote a script to do Net, um, Hemlock Grove. And I think that's unprecedented. Um, and also to have him there on hand to ask all these quirky questions about the show because it is a bit of a quirky (laughs) show (laughs) Um, he didn't really have any interest in tying up loose ends and I guess that's one of the other things that's great about Netflix you know we don't really have that kind of episodic tie off at the end of of every show we don't have to cut to commercial breaks Mm -hmm. Um, we can sort of explore those darker places um, uh, that the show certainly goes to. And uh, my character, Clementine Chasseur, has plenty of those dark places. She does. Uh, she plays things very close to the vest. Uh, I, 
I've get, gotten so many people come up to me today going, I really don't like Clementine. Oh, no. But I'm only halfway through the show. I'm like, just wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> keep watching. Just keep watching. You know, uh, we're, we're trying to be a, a bit more adult than Twilight, although mm. we, we have those themes, uh, young coming of age and, and romanticism. And, and, and it, there is something romantic about monsters. I don't know what it is. Human beings I love to, to know those those heinous kind of places within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I think what's beautiful about the show is, you know, who appears to be the monster. Characters like Clementine mm -hmm. um, are, are the ones that do some of the most beautiful things. And the ones who look beautiful on the outside mm -hmm. end up being the monsters. No, you're right. Kind of comes back to that old theory, the beauty and the beast. The whole, the whole scenario. So, well, I really appreciate your time. I know that it's a busy con and, and you want to get back to your fans. And I really want to thank you for your time and, and uh, being here with us and always coming to support the fans. It's my pleasure, Michelle. Dragon Con is and will continue to be the standard by which conventions are set. <laughs> I agree. I agree. <laughs>